I wanted to share with you something which I discovered I whilst I was researching the the, the course on uh, Comfy UI and Stable Diffusion, I discovered quite a number of interesting stuff. Uh, and, and one of the things I was looking at was the behavior of the CFG scale, the uh, classifier free guidance scale, and just how how well it works and how well it doesn't work sometimes. And uh, one of the things I discovered was that there is a way or at least some suggestions of how to fix the problems with the CFG and the results you get, uh, you can see some of them here, the results I got, you can see some of them here. They're kind of pretty amazing. And all of these images here, they are actually, believe it or not, using exactly the same prompt as this image. Uh, they're all from the same prompt and <laughs> the kind of variety of images you can get. Uh, the only thing changing is the seed. And uh, you can see the kind of variety of, of all of them splendid. I really like this one here with the with the kind of God rays coming out from behind. Uh, but so many images just come out brilliant and kind of really amazing. When I first started looking at this, um, th th this extension, it actually I had difficulty getting it to do what I wanted it to do. And then I decided, okay, let me just, it modifies the behavior of the CFG scale. So it goes in between the, the, the sampler and the model. And what it does, um, it, it just changes the behavior. It's, it's a tone mapper, changes the behavior of the, the sampler. And uh, what I found was that when I had two, two, uh, two samplers, we ended up with really kind of amazing contrasts. We have one sampler here that generally produces these sorts of really nice looking, quiet, not too vibrant, not too crazy images. And then boom, we get this second image after more sampling, which produces images like I've never been able to create before. And uh, what we're using here, believe it or not, the CFG scale, normally when you get to about 15 or 16, the CFG in uh, Comfy UI, normally at that level, it's it's broken. Yeah, it starts, it starts to break. And by the time you get to 30, it's nonsense. You, you can't really work with it. But with this modification, I was able to just forget what I was initially trying to do, which was initially I was trying to get the CFG to respect the the prompt. And the prompt is just a piece of nonsense. It's a kind of a lament of uh, the, 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 the loss of humanity to AI. But basically the prompt, I wanted it to regard the prompt. I wanted it to think about the prompt a bit more and to use the prompt a bit more. And I thought, no, let, let me stop doing that. Let me just take the CFG scale and just play with it. And when I started to do that, that's when the really, really fascinating stuff uh, started to come in. Now, the the modification is a simple, uh, just a one basic modifier that goes in between the model and the sampler and is based actually on research that comes from ByteDance, you know, the uh, TikTok guys. So there are a number of researchers there who found some interesting stuff uh, about the, the way that the uh, stable diffusion of the way that we use some of the mathematics inside of stable diffusion. And they say stable diffusion uses a flawed noise schedule and sample steps. And uh, they suggested some solutions. So that's one of the su suggested solutions. And these are some of the images that we got. I really like this one here. And this one, I have no idea where this one came from. And this is how it was modified in the second round. But you can kind of see the, the, the sort of really vibrant colors that we get sometimes. And these vibrant colors are not coming with some of the negative effects of high CFGs that we normally get. And we can see some more. Now, guys, if you want to learn a bit more about this, this is very new stuff. The paper we're talking about was actually published, I think, just a couple of weeks ago. So at some stage, I think the extension will be released. Currently, it is just an experimental phase. It's, it's not out for, uh, for, for, for um, you know, professional use yet. But if you want to learn more about all this sort of stuff, as I say, I've got a course on this and we talk a lot about the course. Uh, we talk a lot about prompts and CFGs and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, I've recently updated the course. So it's now a couple of hours longer than it was before. And there's a whole new section about prompt engineering and also the CFG and how it works with prompts and steps and all that kind of stuff, clip skipping. So uh, if you want to go over to that course, there's a discount. 
that you can use right now and uh, I'd love to see you over there um, and uh, if you were to sign up right now you'll be able to see this discussion on CFG there's a lecture specifically discussing CFG uh, prompts clip skipping uh, sample steps and how they all interact so love to see you over there follow the link in the description use the uh, discount code and hopefully we'll be able to enjoy this new technology once it finally comes out there are actually a couple of different uh d d different proposals for fixing the the, the the cfg but i tell you what i really like what i see so far